This is Word, Worship and Prayer with Dupsi Oyene. Stay blessed and stay connected. Hello and welcome to another edition of Word, Worship and Prayer. I'm Dupsi Oyene. In the last two episodes, we looked at the fellowship with the Trinity under two topics, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God. Today, we'll be looking at the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Our anchor scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14 says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. At the beginning of this series, one of the things I mentioned is that God wants to manifest himself to us in all dimension, in his full dimension. So he doesn't just want us to experience the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ alone. He also wants us to experience the love of God and the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And so today we'll be delving into that topic under the fellowship with the Trinity titled Fellowship with the Holy Spirit. In that anchor scripture that we read, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, the word fellowship, in the last part, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, in its original sense, means koinonia, is the same word used for intercourse between male and female. And we know that when this happens, there is an exchange. Another word for that koinonia in English is intimacy, communion, fellowship. And that is what God desires, that we will indeed have a fellowship a communion with the Holy Spirit. God's desire is not just for us to have this fellowship and this communion once in a blue moon, but his desire is that it will be a daily and hourly per minute per second experience that we have as believers. As I was meditating on this topic, I heard the Spirit of God saying to me, intimacy cannot be built in the public. It is built in the secret place. The same way, the intimacy that happens between a man and woman that leads to production is not something that happens in the public. It's something that happens in their secret place. And God is saying, for you to have that real intimacy with my spirit, it must be something that is cultivated in the secret place. We all know that the currency of building any relationship is time. And when it comes to the Spirit of God, it is not an exception. You cannot build a relationship with God when you don't have time for Him. A lot of times, some of us are just occupied with activities. We're active in church, and this is very good. I'm very active in my church. We go out there and we do things that help to build the kingdom of God. But a lot of times, our personal relationship with God is nothing to write home about. And today, by the help of the Holy Spirit, I pray by the time we're done today, God will energize and revive our hearts to go back to that place of intimacy. Let no one fool you, child of God. To know God and to experience the fullness of Him is not something that happens in the public. Yes, we go to meetings, we get impacted. We hear messages and we get impacted. We go for meetings and we hear a word that activates us and takes us to another level. But to maintain a steady and constant relationship with the Holy Spirit is not something that happens in the public. Let me use this as an illustration. You might go out there and buy all the ingredients that you need to cook. If you don't bring those ingredients home and begin to clean them up and put them together and preserve them, all your effort going shopping will just be a waste. That is why there was a group of people in the Bible. They were called Berean Christians. They were described as people that when they heard the word of God, they went back home, they searched the scriptures, and they confirmed that those things they heard out there, they are true. get me wrong. 
you will learn from people. You will learn from situation. You will learn from circumstances around you. But what holds those things together is that which you learn during your personal time with the Holy Spirit. And that is why the scripture says the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Not just with some people, but with everyone who has been identified as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no shortcut to this. Even for those of us that were parents or those of us in relationships, you can't expect somebody else to spend time with that person you claim to love and the intimacy they enjoy is then transferred to you. No, it doesn't happen that way. If you desire to grow your relationship with a person, you must consciously spend time with that person. So if you desire to know the Holy Spirit, you must, on your own, spend time with him. And why is it so important for us to spend time with the Holy Spirit? It is important because it is in that place that there's an exchange. When we go into his presence and we fellowship with him, death is exchanged for life. Sadness is exchanged for joy. Weakness for strength. Negatives for positives. Hear this. A man or a woman that spends time in the presence of God can never be down. Even when they go into the presence of God dejected and depressed, by the time they spend time with the Holy Spirit, there is an exchange. And whatever sadness they went in with is laid down and then they receive and take on the joy of the Lord. That's why I love that song that says, I'm trading my sorrow, I'm trading my shame, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. What I'm trying to establish today is a very practical thing. You know if you are doing it and you know if you are not. There's a concept in the Christian fold, we call it quiet time. And a lot of us do it in the morning and that is fine. But sometimes when you look at your schedule in a day, take for example, a woman with five children that she needs to get them ready for school and they need to be in school by 8 a.m. How possible is it for her to wake up in the morning, have a quiet time and then still be able to create time to get the children ready and get them to school before 8 a.m. If she has to do this, maybe she'll probably wake up say 3 a.m. and I don't know how sustainable that is. So, if you, for example, look at your schedule in a day, your 24 hours, and the convenient time for you to have your quiet time is 12 noon, by all means, do so. If you look at your schedule and the convenient time for you to have your quiet time is 3 a.m. in the morning, by all means, do so. If 6 a.m. works for you, perfect. If 4 a.m. works for you, perfect. If 10 p.m. works for you, by all means, do so. But as a matter of necessity, we must create that time. You don't give God the rest of your time. You give him the best. Because there is no point, for example, saying you're having your quiet time and half of the time you are sleeping or you are losing concentration. I know people that their quiet time, they do it at 2 a.m. Because by that time, the house is quiet. The children have gone to bed. They've sorted out everybody and they are alone in God's presence. Whatever works for you, every single day of your life, make sure you spend time with your maker. Make sure you spend time with the audience of one. One of the things I love about God is that if I'm the only one praying to him, he hears me. If we are two, he hears us. If you are a million, he hears us. So don't be worried about you are the only one praying because the one you are praying to is the audience of one. He hears you. He knows you. He loves you. And he's yearning for that time alone with you. In closing today, I want you to make a resolution. And in making that resolution, understand that on your own, you cannot make it. But there is grace, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that is available to you. Understand 
that God loves you unconditionally. He loves you even more than you love yourself. And he desires your fellowship. He desires to be with you. And so in making a commitment to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, trust in the grace of Jesus Christ. Trust in the love of God. And know that when you come into the presence of the audience of one, his love is there, his presence is there, and his grace is there. And why does he want you to spend time with him? He wants to reveal himself to you. He wants you to know him more. He wants to show you your own part in establishing his kingdom here on earth. Our spending time is not to show off, but it's a time where God deposits himself in us and we go forth into the world to manifest as his children. God loves you and he wants to spend time with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you for another opportunity to learn at your feet. Lord, we know that there's so much going on in the world. Things are calling for our attention. People are calling for our attention. But we know that it is a matter of necessity that we spend time with you first. Because in spending time with you, then we are equipped to answer to everything that is calling for our attention. And so, Father, today we ask for your grace. The grace to come into your presence. The grace to stay in your presence and the grace to receive from you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for drawing us because the Bible says no one comes except they are drawn. Holy Spirit, draw us into the presence of God and help us to lay down that which is not of you and take on that which is of God. Thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen and amen. If you've joined us today and you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, you won't even begin to experience or to understand what the fellowship with the Trinity is all about. But it's a very simple process. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I know that I need a savior. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and be my savior. Take over the administration of my life and help me to live for you. Help me to honor you in all that I do. Thank you for answering my prayers. In your precious name, I have prayed. Amen and amen. If you've prayed that prayer with us, congratulations and welcome into the kingdom of God. Send us an email at fortisconcert at gmail.com or leave a comment. We will get in touch with you and we will recommend you to a Bible-believing church near you so that you can grow your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's been an amazing time sharing the word of God with us today. And in closing, I would like to share this song with us. It is titled, Open Heavens. My prayer for you and for me is that every time we come into the presence of God, the heaven over us will be open. Because when the heaven above us is open, then we can receive word, we can receive revelation, we can receive divine impartation. Until I come your way again, I'm Dupsi Oyenei. Stay blessed and stay connected. Bye for now. This is our declaration. That the heaven over us is open. Open for blessing open for breakthroughs. Yeah, yeah. Open heaven over. Open heaven over me. I don't know about you, but I say, open
is a shift to order in my life. Divine arrangement in my life. There's a shift to order in my life. That's what happened on the open heaven. Divine attention. What happened on the open heaven? Glorious ascension. It is. 